Hi guys, Ashley here. Today I'm bringing you Ada Young from Pinduoduo. Yes, that mysterious Pinduoduo, the e-commerce platform, the fruit seller, the live streaming guru that you all want to know about. Ada, although in Pinduoduo they do not use titles, is the international PR manager. Ada, it's phenomenal to have you with us. It's very nice to, uh, to be on the show. First of all, I would like to know, and especially for those people that do not really know much about your company, how would you explain what business is Pinduoduo really in? Um, we are, Pinduoduo is a very young company. We started in 2015. When we just started, we wanted to build a platform that can leverage technology and to place users' ever-changing needs through interactions and connections among them. So we created this interactive mobile internet platform. So we provided this social e-commerce experiences to enable our users to discover interesting uh, products and uh, value for money products on our platform. So we actually encourage people to share, um, interact, people to interact with each other and together they can find more value for money products and then to have more fun on, on our platform. And some people say in, in a short way, they say, oh, it's like a Groupon for China. Would you agree or not? Is it really a Groupon for China or is it much, much more? It is so much more than Groupon. Groupon, I think Groupon people use uh, coupons to buy stuff, but we actually bring actual like value for money savings to our users. And the e-commerce just for, uh, again, people's understanding, the e-commerce platform is hosted on Pinduoduo, right? It's not an external yeah. link. It's not Every an external link. Yeah, everything happens on our platform. On the platform. And another thing that I believe a lot of people also misunderstand is that group buying means that, for instance, Ashley and Ada can buy together, but on Pinduoduo, I can actually go to the platform and I can find the person that purchases with me right on the platform. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Ah, that's exciting. That's exciting. <laughs> um, right now, I know that a couple of days ago, even though mm -hmm. we have a lot of bad news uh, coming out of the rest yeah. of the world and from China, but a couple of days ago, there were some good news on Pinduoduo stocks. <laughs> Tell us Thank about you. it. Yeah, we actually raised the 1.1 billion USD through private placement last week. Mm, I mean, we're a very young company. We know this is a very difficult time. Uh, we founded back in 2000, when we fr uh, first founded back in 2004, uh, 15. It has only been five years, but we grew really, really fast. Um, and um, we, as of last year, December last year, we uh, surpassed 1 trillion in GMV and we connected 585 million users with millions of merchants. So even though it's difficult, we cannot stop. Uh, basically, um, yeah, and um, you know, it took a lot of our peers uh, over years 10 years to do this to to get to you know the 1 trillion on uh, GMV milestone so we feel like we need to keep on going so you know like the market has been very volatile and we believe that this extra cash will be able to allow us to capture more attractive opportunities and also it gives us more flexibility when it comes to expansion and uh, you know to capture more opportunities um, and uh, we brought this idea to our long-term investors um, they welcomed the idea and they were raised the money within a very short period of time only a few only just a few days we raised the 1.1 billion that's um, amazing what are you going to do with yeah. that money just tell me what are you going to do with all that money what is the what is the grand vision yeah, we, um, so our cash position has always been very positive and strong. We believe this new additional cash will help us, um, you know, keep on innovating and bring more value for money products, make a wider variety of products available to our consumers. And at the same time, we can bring more fun and the interactive experiences to our um, consumers, like the live streaming features that I can elaborate more later on <laughs> in, the, in the session. Absolutely. And um, uh, this is exciting. So all these plans are for this year. Were they somehow impacted by what's happening in China right now with coronavirus outbreak and post coronavirus? All these features were planned long ago. And right now you're just going to be executing on them. Um, well, it has been, a, you know, bringing interactive and the fun experiences to our consumer. This has always been a priority. Uh, I have to say right now, this is a very difficult time for a lot of people, but it also brought a lot of opportunity. Uh, we have seen consumer 
um, behaviors has has been changing, and we have seen broader adoption of mm. uh, you know e-commerce during the outbreak. People who have who are stuck at home, they had to turn online to buy stuff. So it it kind of encourages us to uh, accelerate our innovation and technology to bring better and uh, more interactive experiences to our users. That's beautiful. And you just now mentioned mm -hmm. that consumers are, you know, mm -hmm. changing their behavior, mm -hmm. changing their values. Mm -hmm. um, from your mm -hmm. standpoint, where you are, from what you see from your customers and consumers and users, what is exactly is changing? Um, I would say the interaction between people have already changed, not just on consumers, mm -hmm. but also like every day. Like I would... Um, I felt like it, thanks to technology, we can get through this so much easier than I thought. For example, when I miss my parents, I would actually video chat them. And uh, my husband can, like, he's bored and he can play video game with uh, on Nintendo with um, my cousins who are like <laughs> thousands of miles away. So everything um, has been so much easier because at the end of the day, um, we are all social animals where we yeah. all want to have that sense of community. So because of technology has been, it has allowed us to stay connected. Uh, so, um, I mean, for example, take our platform as an example. Um, I have, when I, when I used to buy like oranges, I would just go online and I, see the picture and the click and I re like look at the review oh whether it's good or not I just buy it but this time because of live streaming <laughs> I was like the farmers gave me a virtual tour of their farmland and uh, they show me okay where the oranges were growing and I would uh, see his first reaction when he picked the oranges and uh, try it and I, it was so much more fun and real and so much more interactive and I could like type my questions down there so I feel like the consumers were giving a broad more a wider variety of content to them mm. and uh, yeah and everyone has the opportunity to broadcast different content um, so this is what I have seen in terms of um, consumer behavior changes uh, people are embracing technology and the people like the way consumers interactive with each other the consumer for example i can buy stuff with my parents together and at the mm. same time consumers the way they interact with the the merchants are so much more different than before oh yeah and uh, yeah and if you look at them the 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 broader from a broader perspective i can give you a number like an up, update of, of the numbers so um we we have seen very strong local demand I, so be, be, before I came back I was like okay our people are still gonna buy stuff mm -hmm. and actually we have observed a very very strong um, demand and transaction on our platform so we before uh, people return to work February 27th to February 29th during that three days we launched a 10 billion uh, subsidy program within the first 12 hours over 5 million subsidized products were sold and they sold wow. like 50,000 iPhones, 30,000 MAC lipsticks. So you can see like, the, yeah, the consumer, you know, the demand are still pretty strong and the PMI, it dropped sharply February, but it bounced back pretty fast in uh, March. So yeah, as from my personal uh, point of view, I felt like people are embracing the changes and are coping up with the changes. So that and are people, are people buying also different things or are they just buying the same things, but in a different way? Uh, I think they are buying different things. For example, our, on our platform, I can give you some popular categories where people are stuck at home. They buy like personal grooming tools, they buy <laughs> yoga mats. Pajamas. Buy, I yeah, know pajamas. pajamas were very popular. <laughs> yeah, pajamas and all that. Like you can see that the change um, you know, like that's reflected in people's daily routine. Yeah, that's beautiful. And what is Pindu yeah. Dua doing in order to capture that change in mm -hmm. consumer behavior? Because as you said, it's becoming a lot more interactive. People demand, mm -hmm. first of all, you need to be online. You need to be live streaming. Right now, everybody mm -hmm. needs to be on live stream. You need to give access yeah. to, again, small guys being able to, to mm -hmm. do that. At the same time, you need to subsidize a lot of things. We see local government subsidizing. Mm -hmm. We see a lot yeah. of platforms subsidizing. At the same time, mm -hmm. you as a platform need to be a lot more responsive. From what I understand, 
hand right now uh, from uh, Pinduoduo to JD to Alibaba to Tencent, the internal team is actually encouraged to reach out to merchants and say, hey guys, how can we support you? Previously, it might be for some people challenging to connect with the platform. So a lot of things are actually shifting right now. What mm -hmm. is Pinduoduo doing to, you know, to stay on top of that? Yeah, so first of all, we have been really, really busy during us, <laughs> like all our colleagues are almost um, exhausted. Yeah, exhausted. We wanted, to, especially during the outbreak, I think um, after, right after we were allowed to return to work, um, mm -hmm. a lot of our colleagues were working under the clock to make sure that the daily necessities can be passed on to the house of our consumers. And mm -hmm. at the same time, we're just trying to stay strong and positive for our community, not just limited to our users, but also to um, you know, everyone who's suffering during this trying time. So first of all, we continue our 10 billion subsidy program. Mm. And for our farmers, we initiate this uh, help, um, help the farmers initiative. We helped more than 67,000 farmers from around 400 agricultural areas. So we sold nearly, um, 1,500 metric tons of um, agricultural produce through wow. live streaming. So we wow. helped the farmers to sell the products that were not, you know, were not be able to sell during that time because of the restriction of logistics and stuff. And uh, when the uh, outbreak just started in 2019, we in donated, uh, we established the fund of a uh, 100 million RMB with the Zhejiang University to help the research um, of the coronavirus. Um, and also we work with the local government too. Uh, for example, mm. uh, the Ningbo government, we, we have seen a lot of overseas orders have been canceled during this time. So we were helping the local merchants to find their domestic demand and to, mm. to help them, you know, tailor made some products that can be sold in China domestically to our Chinese consumers. Uh, through different type of initiatives. So we are just, we just kept leveraging technology to enhance the, you know, experiences, um, not just for our users, uh, merchants, but try to connect them more efficiently and in a more fun and interactive manner. That's why we launched the live streaming um, features uh, a while ago. Ah, oh, that's absolutely yeah. beautiful. And uh, <laughs> on this uh, answer, I've got two questions. First of all, you mentioned logistics, right? Working with mm -hmm. farmers is all about logistics. Um, everybody was disrupted and uh, logistics was distracted, etc. What and how have you managed to actually deliver, produce to people's homes during this whole coronavirus in the past three months? What um, is the, is it collaboration? Is it in-house teams? We, uh, no, we work with the logistic partners. Uh, we don't have our logistic, uh, we, we, we don't have our warehouse and everything. Mm -hmm. We're just a 100% platform. Right. So actually, if you look at numbers, it's not that bad. Like oh, um, in March, 93% of logistic network has been recovered. Over 3 million people have returned to work in the postal uh, industry. And we also provide a subsidy, pro a subsidy program to, right. um, in, in terms of logistics. And also, for example, for like, you know, um, orders from farmers, we provided like three, up to three RMB per order uh, in terms yeah, yeah. Uh, like to subsidize them. So we're trying our best to, in every way that we can to help them and to help the products um, being delivered to our, um, from the merchants, to our consumers in a very effective and efficient manner. How quickly right now we are in April, right? Early April. How quickly do people get those products right now? If I'm purchasing, as you mentioned, oranges, how quickly can I expect to get those oranges delivered to me if I'm located in a first tier city in China? It, our products are guaranteed to sh be shipped within 48 hours. Uh, I would say from my own experience, I, I have no problem receiving my orders uh, on time. Uh, and, uh, you know, like, I'm not sure during the outbreak, there's definitely some delay. But for now, I have, you know, everything has been pretty much back to, back normal. to normal. Yeah. That's beautiful. And you also mentioned you collaborating with the provincial governments like or city governments like Ningbo, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. to actually help local merchants deliver products to local consumers. Do you feel that uh, right now the demand 
for, you know, within mainland China, the demand for various products? Is it just a tiny spike? Is it really back to normal? Is it going to somehow be weaker uh, going forward because a lot of merchants within China potentially will not be able to ship globally and people are going to lose their jobs? So this is a broad question. I understand that you're not a Mm -hmm. fortune teller, but just from your understanding, um, how strong is that demand really for domestic products within China? The, the local demand has been very, very strong. I can give right. you some numbers, which is very fresh numbers. So since mid-March, the second half of March, we have seen on average every day five, uh, 15 million orders processed on our pro- platform. Whoa. And, yeah, that is like a 60% year-on-year growth in terms wow. of order numbers. So you can see, I, I feel like people are, I actually, my mom has, she has been buying so much stuff. <laughs> and uh, Preparing think, for the doomsday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> preparing for the doomsday, yeah. Yeah, I, I have no problem because I feel like my user experience have not been negatively affected. And mm. I, just, I almost felt the same way um, before I left China. And, you know, I, I, just, I just keep on doing what I need to do. And I felt like a lot of consumers probably will feel the same. And plus, uh, they are given better and more interactive experiences. And so before I left China, I was, a, I was pretty new to live streaming. But now <sighs> I'm very addicted <laughs> to it. So, uh, for example, like the other day, we had this um, um, museum and tour virtual museum tour uh, because you know a lot of people they yeah. are restricted from traveling so uh there are uh, seven museums they got on Pinduoduo. they provided this kind of a virtual tour cultural tour to our users and that's just, it's actually pretty fun to watch and you can actually learn the culture learn the art and then you can also like buy uh the souvenirs at, at a very attractive price so so yeah, I, I don't see why people are stopping uh, from purchasing more. And uh, that's why you see the local demand has been pretty strong. Right now, half of the people out there must be like, oh my God, I want to get a free tour of a Chinese museum <laughs> and I want to purchase some of that stuff. Basically, yeah, it's a free tour and what you can do is you can purchase souvenirs, etc. Can foreigners actually get on that platform if you're not located in China? Can people actually experience something like that? You can because we are. Uh, we, you can you can access uh, live streaming through WeChat mini program. So right. as long as you have the link, you don't really have to download uh, the app. Then you can ac- you can actually watch the live streaming without any problem. Ah, so right now people yeah. must be plotting who to ask on WeChat to share that magical link. That's gorgeous. <laughs> That's how we started. We share a link. We share what we want to buy with our family and friends. You know that that's how it all started it's a very social company literally like at the core of how you know china works through this word of mouth and right Mm -hmm. now as we said this all these changes are obviously uh, putting together this new normal and nobody really Mm -hmm. sees very clearly what is this new normal is going to look like but Mm -hmm. in your view what is the direction Mm -hmm. where this new normal is going and what is pinduoduo doing to prepare for it um i felt like like i said i felt like the new norm is how people like the way people change, uh, the way people interact has been changed and mm. has been so much more fun and engaging. So I can't even imagine if 10 years ago this happened, what I would I do? I, <laughs> I felt like the new, <laughs> yeah, I felt like the COVID-19 has apparently accelerated, accelerated a lot of changes, a lot of adoption of digital, adoption of online shopping, ad- uh, adoption of, uh, you know, e-commerce. I bet like a majority of Chinese people have purchased groceries online. Yeah. No matter how, yeah, in, you know, in despite of their ages and all, all that. So um, it's, a, it's a very technology and has been given people a relatively equal access mm. and it allows people to, um, to have their sense of community, sense, sense of like a social um, satisfied so i felt like this is something that has been um you know has been accelerated during this time and i felt like although our life will be back to normal eventually people will be able to go on the street they will be able to shop offline they will be able to do a lot of different things you know physically in person but i feel like this whole time the covid19 has been mm, 
making a very long-term impact on people's life and their daily habits. And at Pinduoduo, uh, as our company, as an interactive and e-commerce platform, I think we are just gonna keep on learning, keep on understanding <laughs> our consumers, and we hope through interactions, um, you know, through sharing, our consumers will be able to find um, better value um, better on our platform, and they can save more money, and they ha can have better and uh, interactive experiences like live streaming on our platform. Yeah. This when you talk about the social element, because it's, it's so fascinating to me, and you mentioned it many times, you know, to be it to be more gamified, more interactive, mm -hmm. more social. What are, and just introduce us, whether they are old or new or whatever, what are the social features of Pinduoduo actually? How social is that, um, that platform? Basically, you can share everything that you use, you see on Pinduoduo through, through the social app. Like when I see this orange, when I see this live streaming room, I would be like, how okay, can maybe my mom wants to look at this too. And maybe she wants to buy oranges together with me. Maybe she didn't even think about buying oranges, but I mean, like, why not? And because she trusts me and I trust, and she, and I, I wanted to share what I find, um, you know, valuable to her. So we're like, because we probably didn't even think about talking today. And then we're like, okay, mom, do you want to check out this live streaming? And then we're going to talk about how, like, because from my experience, that orange uh, farm was in Sichuan. So I'm from Sichuan. So like, uh -huh. because of that, we start to talk about a lot of different things. So it's like, it's a, it's, it's everything. Like it's, it has been, um, not just shopping, uh, you know, like just by in sharing um, with your parents, it's like, uh, it's, it's like you're interacting with them. So I feel like this is how social we are. This is how interactive we are. <laughs> oh, this, this is, uh, this is truly the future. And I personally also believe in Mm -hmm. merging this social element of commerce, mm -hmm. marketing, business mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. what people actually want. This is absolutely gorgeous. My last mm -hmm. question would be a shameless plug for your business, in fact. I would like you to tell us, um, as Pinduoduo, as a platform, how do you support international businesses when they are looking to enter China or when they are already selling in China right now? Do you think right now, post-COVID-19, it's a good time to be in China and to use Pinduoduo? If so, in which ways? Uh, Pinduoduo has, like our user base is around like almost 600 million. And you see the GMV has been growing really fast. Mm -hmm. um, right now we're 100% focused on, on China, but uh, we have been cooperating with, you know, foreign partners. We have, we have worked with Amazon to bring like you know, really good products from overseas to China. And we see this as a good opportunity. We will probably keep on doing that and to bring more opportunities, uh, business opportunities to China. And especially with the live streaming, I will probably like uh, do a, a how to, uh, the live streaming feature and the Pindu the one-on-one, one-on-one for our, you know, your foreign, um, business partners and so we can like all talk about the you know potential opportunities that the firm business can come to China absolutely so if it is an individual yeah. company will they also be able to participate let's say they are located outside and they are targeting specifically China or do they need to be already present in China in order to sell on Pinduoduo as a platform at this particular moment uh, I can connect you with the business development team they are the and guys in terms of Ada the is the person <laughs> Ada is the person that is going to connect you with the BD team and you can yeah. talk more uh, yeah. about opportunities on Pinduoduo. Yeah. I personally am extremely excited about this platform and also what is going right now with the China market post COVID-19. It's not going to be instantaneous recovery, but as you can see, some products and some groups are actually growing at, as we can mm. see, 60% year on year. Yeah. It's incredible. And Pinduoduo mm. as a company, I mean, five years old, and you have already captured so much stuff. Ada, it was yeah. absolutely phenomenal to have you on the show. Thank you so much for sparing the time. Yeah. Stay, con stay connected. Um, stay engaged and stay healthy.